What's up everyone, and welcome to the Film Club. In this video, we are revisiting another Martin Scorsese masterpiece, The Wolf of Wall Street. The film has funny dialogue, great acting, and of course, the classic Scorsese storytelling style. If you love the movie as much as me, join us as we take you through 25 facts you maybe didn't know about The Wolf of Wall Street. And I want you to understand, we don't do anything illegal whatsoever. You maybe noticed that Matthew McConaughey looked significantly skinnier than normal for his role in Wolf of Wall Street. This was because he was on his way to losing a lot of weight for his role in Dallas Buyers Club, where he played Ron Woodruff, a man who contracted AIDS in the mid-80s and is given only a few months to live. Also a great film, by the way. Make sure to check it out if you haven't already. As you may know, McConaughey went on to win Oscar for Best Actor with that film, stealing the prize in front of his co-star DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street. Jonah Hill had to use fake teeth for his role as Donnie, and when he first wore them, he had an audible lisp. To fix this, he spent over two hours on the phone calling random businesses and talking with them. While we're talking about Donnie's teeth, the scene where Brad punches Donnie is not staged. John Bernthal's punch was so forceful that Jonah Hill's prosthetic teeth split and flew out. Martin Scorsese then captured Hill's face swelling as it happened. The actors snorted crushed vitamin Ds for scenes that involved cocaine. Jonah Hill said that he eventually became sick with bronchitis after so much inhaling and had to be hospitalized. In an interview with Independent, Jonah Hill stated, We were literally doing fake coke for like seven months every day. I never had more vitamin D in my entire life. I think I could have lifted a car over my head. Martin Scorsese originally suggested that Margot Robbie should wear a bathrobe for the seduction scene with Leonardo DiCaprio, but she insisted on being fully nude, marking her first nude scene in her career. Robbie explained, the whole point of Naomi is that her body is her only form of currency in this world. She has to be naked. She's laying her cards on the table. To calm her nerves, Robbie downed three shots of tequila before filming because she was very, very nervous. Initially, she lied to her family and friends, claiming CGI was used to superimpose her head on a body double, but later confessed the truth after the film's release. Jonah Hill had a huge wish to work with Martin Scorsese. In fact, his desire was so big that he took a pay cut by being paid the SAG minimum, which was $60,000. Jonah Hill even stated, I would sell my house and give him all my money to work for him. With that in mind, the star of the movie, Leonardo DiCaprio, was paid $10 million for his role. Not that it justifies the entire pay difference, but DiCaprio was also one of the producers for the film. During a routine visit, Steven Spielberg spent a day on set observing the filming of the Steve Madden speech. Martin Scorsese asserts that Spielberg effectively co-directed the scene by offering guidance to the actors and suggesting camera angles, as if Jonah Hill wasn't starstruck enough already. This movie is banned in four countries due to high sexual content, that is Kenya, Malaysia, Nepal, and Zimbabwe. For the versions shown in India, several scenes have been cut out of the film. The F word and its many conjunctions are said 569 times, which implies a rate of 3.16 per minute. This made The Wolf of Wall Street the film with the most uses of the word in a mainstream R-rated non-documentary film until Swearnet from 2014 took the record with 935 recorded uses of the word. Thus, for a brief time, Martin Scorsese had taken back that record that he once held with Goodfellas, having 300 uses until Menace to Society surpassed it with 305 uses in 1993. All right, all right, all right. This one you might be familiar with, but the chest beating and humming performed by Matthew McConaughey in his role as Mark Hanna was actually improvised and not initially part of the script. McConaughey actually used to do this as a warm-up right that he performs before acting to lower his voice and tone to the role. It was Leonardo DiCaprio who suggested to include in the scene when he saw Matthew doing his warm-up right. The brief shot of DiCaprio looking away uneasily from the camera was actually him looking at Martin Scorsese for approval. The chest beat humming is probably one of the most iconic scenes in the movie, and it was also used as part of the trailer which already then started the hype. As Martin Scorsese often encourages, a lot of the film's dialogue was improvised. As the already mentioned iconic chest humming scene, another classic was improvised, namely the sell me this pen scene. In an interview with John Bernthal, who plays Brad, he revealed that the scene was improvised by Leonardo DiCaprio. On the day of filming the scene, DiCaprio's security was a New York City detective 
who had had a job interview with Jordan Belfort one time. And of course, in the interview, Belfort had asked the obvious, sell me this pen. When DiCaprio went into filming that day, he decided to include what turned out to be an iconic scene. I really appreciate Martin Scorsese's way of giving room to the actors so they can use their full potential. This has definitely given us some great film moments throughout the time. One of my favorite scenes in the movie is Leo's twisted crawl into his Lamborghini while being absolutely blasted on Quaaludes. What makes this even better is that in a 2014 interview at the Santa Barbara Film Festival, DiCaprio said that his inspiration for the scene was a YouTube clip featuring the drunkest man in the world, noting that he was intrigued not only by the man's elasticated movements, but also by his relentless pursuit of something vital for survival. The beauty of it escalates at DiCaprio's realization when he meets the stairs. I got it. I've got it. I can roll. I can roll. In an Evening Standard interview with Margot Robbie, she shared that during the scene where Jordan Belfort and Nomi LaPaglia have sex for the first time in her apartment and her dog tries to jump up and bite him, they face difficulty getting the dog to jump. To encourage the dog, they had to put dog food and chicken livers all over Leonardo DiCaprio's feet and between his toes. She also stated in the same interview she got a million paper cuts on the back from all that money. DiCaprio later joked that they did hurt, but he didn't care. He was in bed naked with Robbie, so the bills weren't what he was focusing on. Martin Scorsese confirmed that some of the editing is odd on purpose, especially those depicting characters under the influence of drugs. Whenever Jordan takes drugs, the following scenes might not make complete sense and may feel odd. Additionally, to portray Jordan's mental state, director of photography Rodrigo Prieto used a variety of lens types. When Jordan is clear-minded, flat, spherical lenses are used, whereas scenes depicting his altered state feature anamorphic lenses. As the story progresses and Jordan faces pressure, they switch to longer focal lenses to show his increasing stress and the feeling of being watched. The iconic scene where Jordan Belfort crashes a Lamborghini Countach was filmed using a real $700,000 Countach, not a replica. What's even crazier is that the same car, still just as messed up, was sold at an auction in 2023 for almost $1.7 million. Jordan Belfort, the real one that is, coached Leonardo DiCaprio on his behavior as Jordan Belfort, especially guiding him on how he reacted to the quaaludes he abused and his confrontation with Danny Porush while under the influence of drugs. In 2007, DiCaprio, together with Warner Brothers, won a bidding war for the rights of Jordan Belfort's memoir, The Wolf of Wall Street. Ever since obtaining the book in 2007, DiCaprio has been determined to adapt Jordan Belfort's wild story into a film. Yet his interest extended beyond its relevance to the Wall Street collapse around the same time. He was especially drawn to Jordan's raw and unfiltered depiction of his own experiences. Martin Scorsese needed a shot of the fasten your seatbelt sign for the airplane scene, but he didn't want to go through the hassle and expense of setting up a gimbal. Robert Legato, the effects supervisor, recorded a video of one during a flight with his iPhone to show Scorsese. When Scorsese saw the footage, he simply said, great, let's just use that. This made the film Scorsese's first to include footage taken from a phone. Martin Scorsese said that on the set of some scenes, real-life stockbrokers were present and used as extras, including some who had worked at the real Stratton Oakmont firm. In the film's final scene, the real Jordan Belfort makes a brief appearance, introducing his movie counterpart Leonardo DiCaprio. Belfort, as he is portrayed in the scene, is now a motivational speaker who spent 22 months in federal prison for stock fraud. Early on in the process, Scorsese was working on the screenplay and DiCaprio wished for him to direct the film. However, Warner Brothers hesitated to approve the project. Frustrated, Scorsese moved on to work on Shutter Island. Funny enough, DiCaprio was set to star in that film as well. Ridley Scott was considered as a replacement director, but ultimately Warner Brothers dropped the project entirely, leaving the rights available once more. I'm so glad Scorsese got around to do the film. Can't really picture anyone doing it as great. The Wolf of Wall Street remains Martin Scorsese's highest grossing film of all time, making $392 million worldwide. 
The writer of the screenplay, Terrence Winter, had already previous experience working together with Martin Scorsese on the series Boardwalk Empire, in which Scorsese directed one episode. Also, another beneficial experience Terrence Winter had was that he used to work as a lawyer in New York for a few years. He even worked as a legal assistant at Merrill Lynch in their trading department, which likely helped him to write the script. There you have it, 25 facts you now know about The Wolf of Wall Street. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure to leave a comment if there are other facts we missed in this video. As usual, I round up with a random film recommendation. I went to the movies and watched Christopher Borgley's Dream Scenario starring Nicolas Cage. It's a hilarious film with a great performance by Cage, so go check it out. Well, that's it for now. I'll talk to you in the next one.